This week on the podcast, an old school art of wrestling with all of Ring of Honor's The Kingdom. And that's it. Enjoy the show. This is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. It's Dude, come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds and souls, the hearts and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I'm a commentator. I'm a podcaster. I'm an entertainer. I'm a gambler. I'm a lover. I'm a <laughs> Uh, something midnight toker. I'm not a singer. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am sitting here live in my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before we go any further, this is fan support and listener support podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to free of charge every single Thursday. ColdCabana.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple of great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes just like JD Bolin 70 did. Email me your address. I'll get you an autograph for free. Also use social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, however you do it. The best way that you could support. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, a children's book, micro brawlers, and so much more great ways to support coltmerch.com digitalcolt.com doing a bit of a throwback today matt taven tk orion Vinny marseglia the bad boys of boston massachusetts area we'll learn a little bit later that they're not necessarily from the boston massachusetts area respectively but as i have uh, grown to become a bit of a commentator even though i was in a pay-per-view and i did wrestle last week as i've grown to be a bit of a commentator I have uh, seen much of the talent in Ring of Honor, and I think three of the uh, hardest working wrestlers trying to get over, trying to do everything they can to get over to be part of the show, to be stars on the show, are Matt, TK, and Vinny, and I wanted to give my platform to them. Also, I just did the one pay-per-view and then went to my cousin's wedding, so not much in terms of uh, strolling around the country for me. It was just a kind of a one-show weekend for me. So I thought this was a, a perfect opportunity to do a little bit of a throwback and have a hotel room fireside chat with the uh, boys of the kingdom. Before we do that, we will get into a song of the week. Yeah, throwback. We're going to give a song of the week. This week's song is called Ric Flair. And you better believe that at 69 years old, freshly married to Fifi, he's using chewables to get on Space Mountain, if you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I am talking about that. I'm talking about my sponsor, Blue Chew. With Blue Chew, if he wanted to, Rick could increase his performance and gain confidence in bed. BlueChew.com brings the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredient in Viagra and Cialis, so you know that they work. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so the Nature Boy can be ready anytime, day or night. Open parentheses, woo, close parentheses. Blue Chew is prescribed online and would ship straight to Mr. Flair's door if he needed it in a nice, discreet package, meaning there's no more in-person doctor visits, no more wasting time in the pharmacy, basically no more awkwardness. Blue Chew is made in the U.S. and ships directly, so it's basically cheaper than a pharmacy. And I'll tell you what, I got a deal for you. Even if you're not the 16-time World Heavyweight Champion, visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment for free. Just use my code COLT, pay $5 for shipping, and it's yours. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Promo code is COLT. And try it for free. Blue Chew, the better, cheaper, faster choice. That's right. The song, it's called Ric Flair. It's by Tom McGuire and the Brass Holes. Tom and the Brass Holes.com, at Brass Holes on Twitter. They're also on Spotify. They're also touring the UK and Ireland in November. And I'm more than sure they'll be singing this song, the song of the week. It's called Ric Flair. Enjoy, and we'll be back with the kingdom. Oh, it hasn't started. It can start now. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, should we do just for the sake of uh, people knowing everybody's voices, maybe a quick should introduction? They have to guess, or should we put on like our radio voices? Can and anybody get... guess who this is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matt Taven. No, that's not how you do that. I'm Matt Taven, and I am TK Orion. I'm Vinny Marcellia. and this who are you? is. <laughs> <laughs> And this is Kingdom Radio. <laughs> hey, kids. Uh, man, who do you sound like? Casey oh, Kato. Casey. No, TK. And uh, yeah, we can't use pronouns because no one knows what anyone is. <laughs> there's too many if, if there's the so many people. TK, you sound 
like the guy from Crank Yankers, who uh, who I think is a Boston comedian. Which one? Oh, um, Jim, Crank Yankers. Wow. Oh, Jim. N- no. Not Jim Norton. The other guy. What's his name? He does like metal mm. radio, and also JT Dunn sounds the same way. Oh, that hurts my oh, feeling. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's I have a, a fake way, voice, I have a way more sultry voice than that. And that's a, is that. that a Boston area? Sounding? I don't really think I have that much of a Boston accent. I really don't. I'm not from Boston. I'm from Cape Cod. Which is the same thing to <laughs> me. <laughs> it's an hour and a half away. An hour and a half yeah. away. <laughs> so where are you guys in, in relation to every, to everybody? Who's well, I live like right outside of Boston. Um, Vinny is in Rhode Island, Ro- like right, yeah, outside Warwick, of, right outside of Providence. Right. I've wrestled there enough times. Warwick? Where? Warwick. Warwick. The Warwick. 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 <laughs> is that where we wrestled? For yeah, Honor or right. beyond? XWA? Or oh, yeah, beyond? XWA. Yeah, XWA. Yeah, yeah, I've done it there. Yeah. And then you're you're up. And I'm a, I'm a Cape Cod guy, so I'm Southeastern Mass. So we're all about an hour apart from each yeah, other. Yeah, like triangle. a little triangle. New England triangle. Yeah. And how does that... Yeah, I guess the question is like, how do you guys all come together? Because it's a pretty tight unit now, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, we've known each other before we, we debuted here, but uh, it's all because we all went to the same wrestling school. We all went to uh, Spike Dudley's Lockup in Fall River. Uh, we were trained under Spike. Man, I wanted, yeah. I wanted to talk to him. Well, he's like hiding now, huh? He, uh, he's you can get a awesome. Hold of, he's, he's, like, he's one of those guys that you get a hold of and make plans of. You're like, all right, well, I'm going to, uh, like, I, I want you to do this. I'll get a hold of you in a week. And then you never hear back from him, and you can't get a hold of him for you know two months or something like that. So he's you can get a hold of him, and then he kind of de- vanishes. Well, this, I, and I'm going to make you guys talk for Spike, I guess here, because <laughs> this whole podcast is like based off of like, oh, I don't know. Once we go away, no one ever hears from us, and people just assume maybe we all made a million dollars. But there's all <laughs> all these guys that like were on top of the world, and right, now right. are just like. A regular dude, he probably has a regular job. Yeah, if I yeah, know he anything, did, he was a school teacher yeah, and he can he, do he, poems. He does uh, insurance. Ins- insurance. Yeah, he sells now. insurance yeah, now. He sells insurance. Yep. So uh, he's got a. I mean, he's got a regular life, just like you said. He's got a you know wife and kid, and yeah. and uh, when we met him, it was kind of like that transition of him getting used to not being you know a full time wrestler really, and kind of like being back on the indie scene. He just got back from TNA. And uh, he started training at, at the school for uh, the top row promotions uh, promotion. And he was kind of like slowly transitioning out of wrestling. But then when he like, you know, met his wife and stuff, he kind of really tried to jump out of the, the wrestling tried, Can pool. you get a vibe of like it was the worst for him to ju- start jumping out of wrestling or he w- was OK with it? Um, I mean, I don't want to speak too much for him, but, you know, I mean, it's 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 out there like Spike had his his deals you know and his his problems and it seemed like once he got away from wrestling he was doing a lot better with that kind of stuff so i think it just like for his overall health and just well-being i think uh kind of getting out of wrestling completely helped him out a lot because like we're all in it like full time right now right <laughs> right, just hanging out in a hotel. I mean, this is our job. This is what full time <laughs> is, yeah. in it looks like. Hanging out in a hotel, talking to you, Cole. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and so, like, I, it's just at one point, right? Do you, do you guys, Vinny or DK, do you think about the idea of like, oh, when this all kind of stops or when this comes to an end? I mean, I know what, you get what, just how the, how what that's going to gonna affect your mentality, how you think yeah. about that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah I don't we know. just talked about it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and what know? was that conversation? <laughs> what. I mean, uh, did you go ahead. How did that conversation go? Well, I mean, you always know how I always talk about it. Like, I, I kind of want to, like, <laughs> I always say, like, I'm going to throw my phone in the ocean. I'm going to, you know, bartend on an island for the rest of my days and not ever <laughs> worry about wrestling ever again. Because it just, it takes so much out of you, you know, while you're in it. And, like, it takes so much out of you. And there's so much, like, things you have to constantly be scrapping for yeah. that you never get a chance to enjoy it in the moment. So it's like... You know, one day maybe I will enjoy it, and maybe it's just you have to get so far away from it to actually be like, ah, oh, that was pretty cool. You know, so I think that's my my overall plan. I don't think Vinny had a plan. I think he just I listened really, to mine. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that sounds yeah, right. Bart <laughs> sounds like a good plan, man. I'll meet you on the island and throw my phone too. <laughs> Uh, I'm, not, I'm not as I'm not it, as like uh, I guess downtrodden about life after. Re- I, I've had my dreams crushed before. Like go I, on. Like I wanted to be a baseball player. I didn't want to be a pro wrestler. So I mean, um, I kind of came into wrestling later in life. But like I want life. You're 21. Wait, no, no, I'm 28. <laughs> <laughs> well, you Appreciate say it's 21. You know what I mean? Come on, don't yeah. let yeah. Nah, But no, dude. Like I wanted to be a pro baseball player, and uh, like when that didn't work out, I mean. I kind of went through the whole like oh life's over phase and 
I threw that. I found wrestling. So I, I, to me, I think when I'm done with wrestling, I'll find something else to what, do. What was the what was the fuck you from pro base or from baseball? I was done. Who I told just, you fuck you? <laughs> uh, all 32 major league baseball. Teams. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I got offered to go down and and uh, like try out with a couple teams after my senior year and everything. After I'd gone through the draft twice and just I was done. I didn't want to do it anymore. Sounds I, weird, like like a war to me. <laughs> kind of felt like it when I was just it, over with it. Just kind of. So hold on, you were a, you were a star baseball player in high school, I guess so, <laughs> or college. <laughs> yeah. Where do they draft you from? Uh, both. You can go after your senior year of high school, or you can go. Uh, it's similar to like how the NBA used to be, where you could go after your freshman year, and then you'd have to wait till your junior or senior year after that. Is that real? Yeah, yeah. yeah. baseball's weird yeah. like that. You can't get drafted your sophomore year. <laughs> but so once you go to college, you can get so you can get drafted out of your senior year of high school. Then if you go to college, you got to wait till your junior year. And then you can get drafted then. So so you were waiting on both of those draft years. Yeah, so coming out of high school, I made it clear I wasn't going to sign out of high school even if I got drafted. So I just basically told every team, don't bother. I'm going to go to college. I have no interest in signing. Why is that? Because I knew that the money wouldn't make sense. Unless you go in the first, like, ten rounds out of high school. To me at the time, it's different now because now they do different pays and all that. But uh, at that point, I just wasn't interested in it. And I wanted to go to college. And then – uh I ended up having a big breakout sophomore year, which kind the of, worst year to have the breakout. Yeah, I know. Go figure. I just uh, learned that. <laughs> well, but everyone then, knows don't have your breakout year the sophomore year. What an idiot. <laughs> okay, right. But then, uh, no, that put me in a good position going into like my draft year, and then I had a pretty nasty left. Broke my left foot, actually, ironically enough. This know, guy. Right? Yeah, this guy. All right. <laughs> and then uh, that was the end of that season. And then uh, when I rehabbed and on my way back, I was building that momentum and everything. And I got offered to sign as a non-drafted free agent after my junior year. And I was in my head, I was like, well, I mean, that sounds like an okay deal, but I could just go play my senior year, kill it again, and then I'll, maybe I'll be, my, who knows, could be a first rounder, you never know. It could be big money. And then I completely sucked. <laughs> my, my, my senior year was a complete disaster. Just, uh, just the wheels kind of came off. And because of the up. pressure of like... Uh, it was a couple things, man. I mean, my injury didn't help. Uh, my dad had a stroke uh, my senior year, which kind of like at that point I was done with baseball. I didn't care anymore. And uh, like it, I wasn't even sure if I'd be able to. Is finish there a baseball my... joke in there that you would use? <laughs> a good stroke. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, but no. We laugh about <laughs> your dad's stroke. <laughs> man, you know, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's handicapped now. His right side doesn't work, but he's in good spirits. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> But uh, I did. But no, dude, I mean, that was that. And, and, and honestly, like going back to like what you said about life after wrestling, I mean, that kind of put me in that that place of like, all right, I just spent the last like 15 to 18 years of my life on one single quest and it didn't work. Now what? And and through that, I found wrestling. And that's how I met these guys. And that's how I ended yeah. up sitting here talking it's to you. The greatest day of his life. Yeah. yeah I mean, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when stuff doesn't work out, it's not really the end yeah. of the world. You know? I, might, I might get back into like tattooing if uh, wrestling ever. Yeah, what's your backstory, Penny? I, I, I know. The music stuff. Sometimes on commentary, I say that like you were known in the punk scene, right? <laughs> yeah, but that yeah, was a yeah. thing. Either you told me that story, or somebody told me yeah, that story once. Yeah, beating people up in the uh, <laughs> in the punk scene. Yeah, yeah, raging. Did yeah. you have like a legendary story where you beat the fuck out of someone, or uh, like people talk about? It? Because someone told me something about you, and like that stuff. That's how like lore spreads, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, like you the, did something. Yeah, that, just the one guy that I uh, <laughs> when I was standing there, I heard him say something or whatever. I was with my wife and. Uh, he came over to me and, uh, well, I saw him from a distance and he was kind of like looking at my wife. And uh, so he was like, you know, what's he going to do? He says to his buddy, you know what I mean? So I kind of like kept my cool and stuff. But who then was uh, who was playing that night? I forget who was playing. It might have been at a Manson concert actually over in uh, Providence. What's the, uh, what's the, what's uh, the Comcast what, Center now? No, 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 no. What? <sighs> Snaps? No, the uh, the Snaps the smaller venue there. What the Met? The no. uh, Roxy? No, yeah. next to Roxy. Uh, the Strand? No, this guy knows Lupos. all of them. Lupos. 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 Oh, That's like the Lupos. Geez, no, I went to college yeah. in Providence, so. So, uh, <laughs> did you play baseball? There? No, I did not. If I was, if it was my senior year, though. I would have known that was the year to really bring it. Yeah, so then I just, you know, smashed a glass over this guy's head. <laughs> <laughs> Did you dive no, off but, a balcony, though? Someone said that, too. Is that a thing? That I dove off a balcony? Yeah, into a mosh pit. Uh, I don't know. I'm just making that just up now. That. Yeah. We can just leave. Yeah, let's say, yeah. Did you get into wrestling yeah. late, too, or no? Uh, 
I got into wrestling around 23. I feel like he's I started training with Spike at 23. Okay. You feel like go ahead, continue. You have like the gray hairs. I have, <laughs> yeah. you, you might yeah. be 45 years old. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I'm I'm 55. Years old. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started when I was 23 uh, with Spike. Uh, Matt was a year ahead of me, and Matt actually I was already wrestling kind of locally before Spike. Uh, you know, at random VFW shows that the we good did stuff. before that. The yeah, good the good ones. stuff. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> Matt was actually uh, trying to get me to go to Spikes for a while before that. And I just kind of was like, uh, I, I guess you could say I was just intimidated to kind of like go there and try to like, because I kind of knew I sucked at that. You know what I mean? So I was like, ah, I got to go show this guy that I actually stink. Intimidated and to pay somebody money to like, that's all it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> it's like, so you know, intimidated I, I, to open I his go wallet. There, yeah. I went there at uh, 23 and uh, man, Spike Spike was awesome. You know, he was, he was great. Tim, and weren't then, you a Kowalski guy? Uh, well, so like uh, I went to Spikes first and then started going up to the chaotic school, which is where uh, Kowalski's school kind of morphed into and always bounced back and forth. But I started off with Spike. I was doing the same kind of like I didn't know any better because um, I started late as well. And so like I got out of college and and was like. I was working for the Patriots and the Revolution. I'm pretty sure I told you this. I was working for the New England Patriots. No. Yeah. Who's the Revolution? I told you this. Uh, the soccer team. So, like, Craft Sports Group owns the soccer team, the professional soccer okay. team, and the football team. You in and New Abyss have a very much similar story. We do. I have no idea he what Abyss's story is. I don't know. He used to do stuff like that for, like, oh, I he no. worked for, like, pro sports teams on, like, a marketing right. side. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, then, yeah. So, that's exactly what I went to school for. And then cool. I started working there out uh, after school or after I graduated. Um, but, like, you know, I'm just, I've always been uh someone to be like active in sports or doing something so like oddly enough uh chris benoit and i've told this story a couple times chris benoit is kind of why i became a wrestler the death of chris benoit oddly enough is that right this this is kind of a crazy story so like not uh, as crazy I, as uh <laughs> chris benoit no, no, I mean, he, or me jumping uh, off the balcony yeah. <laughs> uh but like it was just one of those things where um I, i'd been a wrestling fan my whole life um oh, my friends i grew up with it like back in high school and and stuff where we used to background wrestle so like those were my closest wrestling friends and still like in college when i wasn't watching wrestling as consistently i'd still keep up or they would keep me up to date with what's going on so i was like driving all the way from foxborough to back to new hampshire to like play in a men's basketball league just because i was like bored and uh, one of our buddies came like walking in and was like, oh, my God, they just Chris Benoit's dead and stuff. And we were like, no, you know, no way. Let's all get together and watch Raw tonight. And like it, it was I don't know what it was about it. Like I just got bit by the bug instantly and was like, this is what why am I not pursuing this? Like this is all I've ever wanted to do. But it just took that one thing for everyone to start like getting. Yeah, Isn't it that was, weird how like not weird, but like we, we wonder what the what the things are to make wrestling cool again or whatever it is. Yeah. Or how do we get I don't know if that mm -hmm. made it cool again, <laughs> right, but it got my attention. <laughs> right. Right, 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 but right. it was a thing that brought a bunch of buddy, like 10 people. Yeah. And if that happened to a thousand groups of 10 people, that's right. a lot of people watching wrestling. So, so you never know. But I mean, like it was just, it was literally just like that was like, man, you know, like I, I'm, I'm doing something that I, I'm okay with, but this is what I've wanted to do since I was six years old. Mm. So I kind of jumped in. I was doing terrible backyard wrestling because I didn't know any better. And then a guy Wait, that as an older person, as twenty three, as twenty two year old, back year backyard old. wrestling at twenty two, not 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 not, not no. back, not like in a we backyard. Like, I'm saying like, like in a VFW hall, but like, like there are people. terrible shows in right. front of like six people We're that not trained. everyone, right? Some people aren't trained. Some, I was like, who, where are these? What? I, who's putting this together? I, <laughs> There was a lot. Hi, of welcome man. to New England. Like, yeah. man, yeah. Is that man, how it is like, everywhere else? I'll tell you, there was a lot of them. There's in New England. still a lot of them. Like, there's still a lot of them in New England. It's yeah. kind of crazy. So, somebody takes the. I guess we had a couple in Chicago, but I just feel in 2018. But this wasn't 2018. Well, this was 2008. Yeah. yeah. So it's 2007, 2008. So like my first match is in like. 2008 so yeah yeah 2008 uh i'm wrestling for just like guys that are trained guys that kind of aren't guys that are just lying about being trained you know what i mean right, everyone right. in high spot kick pads and just going out there right. and was there and super pads. veterans on the show that uh, were oh yeah oh this is where <laughs> i met bob evans new england, and stuff. New england you know has I mean? the best super indie veterans. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I like think I can yeah say that like 
So this is where I met all the, the legends. But Bob the Evans is like, Bob you, Evans, you shouldn't be on this show, right? That's his kind of way. So he, Bob would, would go, and now this is going to sound like I'm kind of shitting on Bob, but Bob would go there and like shit on everyone, but also want to be booked on the show as well and be and sell it as almost like I'll teach everyone kind of like how to actually wrestle. So, I mean, it was, it was beneficial to Bob as well. But like the first time I met Bob, he was just kind of in the crowd just, taking dumps on everyone um but he also but it was like a sales pitch to also be like you you suck go come to my school and get trained you know what i mean so like there's obviously something um there and uh oddly enough i had like backyard wrestled with like hansen growing up and that real like 14 year old like on a mattress or trampoline like backyard wrestled with hansen so like i reached out to him and another guy uh, kind of saw me kicking around these terrible, you know, shows, and and brought ended up bringing me over to Spikes. But Hanson was up with the Kowalski group, so like, I was at Spikes for a little bit, and then I would go up to to um, Andover because I kind of lived in Boston's like in between the two, so I'd bounce back and forth. But Spikes is where I started for the first eight nine months. Imagine if like Spike Dudley was the guy coming to those shows <laughs> instead of Bob Evans, and like. <laughs> That'd be the easiest. Like you would yeah, get fifty people. It, it, yeah. I mean, it was a good move well, by by Bob, uh, but that's what move. ended up <sighs> me not going with Bob and going to Spike because I knew who Spike was. So it's like if Spike was doing it, you know, kids would just probably be lining up to hand over money. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> bless them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else is roaming around there? Chi Chi Cruz. Oh yeah. Is that uh, a name? Yeah, yeah. Chi-Chi was, Chi -Chi was uh, that was before us. Yeah, a little bit. He hung out with Bennett. And yeah, and Bennett. Yeah, that was before us. Um, yeah, was, um, Sheldon Goldberg Sheldon? Like, tried to book me on like a show in like 02 and <laughs> something happened. We couldn't yeah. do it or something. I've wrestled for Sheldon at NECW. Oh, a times. The yeah. NECW shows. Yeah, I wrestled for him a million times, man. And he was so he was on that A and E show. Do you the guys best. remember wrestling historian Sheldon? Yeah. Goldberg? How does he? How do you get a gig like so that? So someone and I can't. I can't, um, I, I wish I knew who, who to credit this joke for. It was like wrestling historian. That's just a wrestling mark. Like they just <laughs> put a label at the end there. So like <laughs> that always used to crack Man. me up every time I'd come on and like if you know he's such a character. Like Velcro shoes, like terrible yeah. cheap suit, but like always is trying to say good enough guy, which yeah. is obviously obviously me trying to cover up for just burying him but like <laughs> <laughs> he's always just selling you on like we got big things yeah. we got big things yeah, and then yeah, he doesn't yeah, run a show for yeah. six months and then comes back yeah. and runs three doesn't run a show me on a, um, pierce and i wrestled each other he, he used to be a, a pretty good show it fell off pretty quick in the last 10 years i think well that's the scene right like people yeah. just i don't know i've been thinking about this like if i ran shows like the yeah. first four would probably be like so much awesome. fun to run <laughs> But right. then, like, you, by show 25, yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. It's and I'm surprised some too. people, yeah, I'm surprised some people keep up with it. There's so many promotions oh, that we were just talking about that yesterday. That what was the, the place that we said, that, what happened to that? What, what company was that? Uh, what Russell Circus, Russell Circus we were talking about? Yeah, we were, we were just talking about that yesterday. Like, they just sort of so yeah. I was just in, in Mexico and a bunch of people were wearing Russell, Russell Cir Circus shirts, which is a hard sentence to say. Like some of the wrestlers, you mean? No, just uh, well. Um, this guy who like worked in like one of the media things there. He was he was, works for the company, but he's not a wrestler per se. Like CMLL. Yeah. So um, he's like wearing. And I was like Russell Circus, and he kind of like looked at me like puzzled because to him it was almost like a Nike basketball shirt. Like like wrestling's a circus, you know what I mean? So like they look at it as like oh this is just a cool wrestling shirt. Right. So like it was like a a thing, you know as. Uh, like a, a marketing thing down there that kind of caught on. I saw a couple people with with wrestling like at shows being like, "Man, Wait, someone a lot of took the logo of the of the circus. promotion in Austin, Texas." So I don't know if they ordered it like off their. If I don't know uh, if I would assume I'm yeah. not. You know, I'm not trying to bury anyone. I'm assuming that was in someone's. You know, a garage just being screen printed. Yeah, I haven't but, been to Mexico as much as you have, but I've been enough to like. Yeah, so I would assume that you're probably right, but but yeah, that's they just picked up on that i guess Weird. and but i don't know what know. happened right yeah wrestle circus yeah he ran a bunch of shows he loved it yeah. and then uh, what happened was it kind of got successful and then like i feel like the pressure of like everyone wanting to be on the shows and like right. then all of a sudden like wanting money and like well i want money but, like sure and then it's More. just like kind of caught up yeah next yeah. thing you know it's like a hundred thousand dollar sure. budget yeah, or whatever right, right, right. It starts as like a twenty dollar thing <laughs> that could i mean that's really stressful you got thousands of dollars on the line yeah, and yeah. 
Everybody's, everybody's like banging them. at your door. This guy's pissed at you. This guy's saying, you know what I mean? It's a lot to. What about a kingdom show? You guys gonna run that? Kingdom show. Well, I mean, you guys already do January fourth and. Uh, Japan every year, don't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That you know, we're behind the scenes on that, obviously. Um, well, we we've helped out with. Uh, we we obviously have the school um, in in Rhode Island. Which what do you is mean, obviously? Obviously, because what do you not read the internet cult? Yeah. Like I knew you we, guys have a school. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, West Warwick. Yeah, uh, me West and Warwick Bennett's. Island. You know, had it going on, but and then obviously when Bennett's on the road more, and then with me obviously being in Mexico a lot lately, Vinny and TK will pick up for. Uh, for us being gone, but it's called the XWA Wrestling Kingdom. It's it's affiliated with the XWA promotion there in Rhode Island because we, we use the building and whatnot. Um, but we also, you know, have been a big part of uh, Northeast Wrestling as well. And, uh, you know, that place has been running for like 20-something years. Right. It's just crazy. And, and, like, the guy who runs it, Michael, Michael Lombardi, you know, I, I love him, but he's he's a nut for doing it that long. That's just, he's, it must you know, make his brains that, into, he, put, he puts a mush. lot of money yeah. in each uh, yeah. one. I mean, yeah. I mean probably get, six figures, but like he might, he might get it back. But each, like when you're booking Ray and Booker T and Jerry Lawler and all right. these guys, right? Yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. crazy. It's, yeah, it is. It's, it's crazy. funny. We always joke about when we do when we go because we'll, we'll be on all those big shows there one way or another. That he does, and what we could tell, like we'll see him and he's all smiles. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. He made his money tonight. He, yeah. he doesn't care about yeah, the rest yeah. of the show. He's all good. <laughs> or or if it's a sold show, oh, oh my God, he comes yeah. into the house skipping. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Biggest smile on his face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's talk about getting into Ring of Honor and, and doing the trios. I, what I like about you guys is that. That, um, uh, in in an industry where everyone breaks up and everyone kind of like you guys seem legit and you're together and it's it's been it's been over a year two and going in year three now going a year just, yeah going so it would be it would be two years last or this month right yeah, it's already yeah, two, so years. It's two years we're going into year three now right if this was WCW or WWE you we guys would have gotten broke. back together yeah, like we, this would yeah, be our third all, reunion tour turned on each other six yeah. times by now yeah so Matt you you and Bennett Bennett left I guess right. Well, I mean, if we want to start before that, how I got in Ring of Honor, you had a, a big part of, of keeping me out, so I heard for, for a long time. <laughs> we had... Uh, uh, yeah. we, I, I thought, actually, that's why we were going to do this podcast, to talk about our secret <laughs> heat feud that we had for years, um, which is why I think this is the first time we've ever done the podcast, yeah. you know? So. Well, I talked about that on, on Bennett's a little bit. Where and I don't know. I don't think I had much pull or anything, and I don't think I said anything to anyone. But there was a. a I'm giving you shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> but there, there was a, a, a kind of like a deep like I could I, I could see myself being pushed out, and I could see the a new crew and I, kind of led by Kevin Kelly and Kevin and, Kelly and was it will, was right under Cornette. Yeah, right. And so the, of course there was a little fucking like what the fuck you know, and there's a little chip on my shoulder for all the. The guys that Kevin's bringing in, I yeah. guess. Well, I mean, there was there was that, and obviously, I, I was on the other side of that, so I didn't really realize. I mean, me now, like seeing the, probably being in your shoes, I'd have been like, "Who the is that right. team?" Sure, sure. You know what I mean? Like, and then the George Animal Steel thing happened, yeah. and so like we, you, uh, you know, promoted that well, uh, and so we had this this little <laughs> secret heat with one another. Uh, what did I promote well? Oh, the, the the video of George Steele. You, yeah, you, you sent it to people, and it you best. aired it at. You aired I didn't think you'd want to talk about it. Is it a, is it enough time gone now that you feel comfortable uh, yeah, talking I mean, about the it? the, the um, statue of limitations? I think on our feud is his past. Well, I I feel like there's that clip of me beating up uh, Road Warrior Hawk from WrestleMania 13, and like I didn't want to tell anybody in wrestling because I was like, oh my god, everyone's gonna think I'm a fucking idiot. And then there's one, at one point where you kind of like. You own it. And I'm like, this is fun. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm trying to get in your head, is that you did a moonsault and you landed on George Animal Steele's head and you almost murdered the man. Uh, and he no-sold that, by the way. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, my God, if this gets out, like, I, who knows who could fucking start burying me? Right. You're like Cole Cabana. Like Cole Cabana. You know what I mean? He could just But also, I had, I had a show based off of these kind of clips, and that's like the number one moneymaker. <laughs> 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 In a way, well, like, it, but it was it was it was the the um, so to work backwards. It was the approach of how we got to the show that got me mad. Like we we had never talked about it, 
And I'm hearing like behind the scenes, like Colt's burying you. He's sending this video to people. He's he's telling Ring of Honor not to use you and saying you're unsafe. And we've never like if we had sat down and talked about the story. Like I remember talking to Jimmy Jacobs about it, and like afterwards he was like, "Oh man, that sucks for you, huh?" Like he just it like it's one of those stories that it, it was an accident. You know what I mean? And shit happens, but. We had never talked about it personally. And then I get like a text like while we're all in New Orleans, I think, of like, hey, Colt's burying you on his show. And so I just texted you like Which was the live show. I I I, I think so, right? Yeah, yeah. So, not, I mean yeah, for yeah. context, it was the live show where I'm okay. playing these clips. Yeah. And you and your clip is right, of course. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know how much I guess it is Barry, but it's I'm doing commentary over this clip well, we of you. We never had like a relationship at all, so I'm thinking like, who the fuck is like, what's this guy's fucking prop? But yeah. I'm sh sorry if I'm no, not supposed to swear, <laughs> um, because the other thing had happened where you sent it to Mercury as well. So like, I I, I it was pretty hot at that point. Yeah, yeah. Looking back on it, it's it's hilarious. Like, it's not hilarious of what happened, but it's hilarious if I was you. You yes. know what I mean? If I was out of that situation, if you take yourself out of that if context. I take, and, and I even said to these guys a million times, like, if I was in the Ring of Honor locker room and let's say, you know flip or something like did that i'd be like and i've no i've known flip literally since day one that he started training so maybe that's a bad example if a random Jack guy that i crush. didn't know yeah exactly well i know crush random joe schmo okay. moonsaults uh you know george animal steel and is trying to get into ring of honor i probably would have the same reaction as you right um but at the time it's your career it's me it's yeah, my life of you course know what i mean and it, like it happened it was such like a like, a, it really changed the course of a lot of things. So, like, I'm very, I was very sensitive about it. Um, and when I heard that, you know, you were obviously poking fun of it at my expense, I was like, this is Matt David. <laughs> the, what the fuck is your problem? And uh, I, I forget, like, our response, like, ended up kind of, like, cordial about it. But we just had that weirdness between yeah. us. Well, I, I think Kevin Steen was our middleman. Yes, is exactly. Is that right? Yeah. And I did. I did. I, you know, it's just, I don't know. We as people, like, I think I didn't, I, the same, like, I didn't think about your feelings. Yeah. If that makes sense. But and I mean, it was a, selfishly, I'm just like, this is a thing. I'm having fun with it. And then you forget that, right. like, I forget. Sure. That your career and probably like how you felt after you moonsaulted on George Animal Steel's Which head. Which is a crazy story. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that sentence is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so when Kevin said that and like he, he kind of like sat me down or like showed me the text that maybe you sent and like I put in perspective and I took it out of the, the thing and I did. I sent you a, a yep. message and uh, and it was sincere and I apologize and I'll apologize again here oh, on no, air. No, but, no, but that's the thing is that like if the roles were, I could see myself now doing the same exact right. thing. And I almost just wish that we had the chance to just, because I felt like, well, this guy just hates me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, if, if we had the chance to talk and, and I would tell you the story, we'd probably have a good laugh about it, yada, yada, yada. Now go, you know, go make fun of me all you want. Right. But like, I'm like, this is just coming out of fucking hatred. Yeah. Like, this and guy's it's weird that those clips that I do, or that I've, you know, like, it's usually not a talented guy in there. <laughs> right like it's just like sh it's weird it's yeah. just weird yeah, stuff right, so right, then all right. of a sudden like me and that's a huge crowd too like daniel bryan who is the u.s champion for wwe at the time like northeast was able to bring him back for a show because of a long story blah 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 uh so like, that's because he choked a man with a tie yeah yeah you got it uh <laughs> so like there's a bunch of people there huge amount of, uh, and then that clip is probably like my most seen clip that I've ever had in my Type career. In so can. it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, you're infamous for this thing that you really wish didn't happen, but at the same time, it's like, well, that was pretty funny looking back on it. Looking, yeah. yeah. Especially since George was okay, and like for the next couple of months, we actually kind of had a cool relationship. I would check up on him, and he was he was really pissed that I didn't like go all the way. He's like, you got to make sure it's, you're the animal killer now. Like, you got to be you know really? really running with it. I'm like George, I'm so I am so ashamed of what happened. Like, I want to crawl under a rock anytime anyone talks about it. That's like the last thing on earth I want to do. So he was right. pretty. That was probably the most upset thing he was about the whole situation is that I didn't take advantage of it more. So what an old school mentality. Yeah, you know? yeah he is. loved it. He, he no sold the injury that night too, right? <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's the story. I so hear. like we, <laughs> it's just like a crazy. Like we went out uh, afterwards, everyone to eat, and I'm just like nervous at this point, and like. 
he's got like a, like a bruised rib and he's obviously like this kid just moonsaulted him in the back of the head and he's an old man so he's all beat up but you wouldn't know the difference and i'm like nervous talking to him i ended up knocking like all the glasses off the table and we're eating like i'm just i was a mess um but he was just looking at me like what's your deal kid and like later i found out that like he kind of was was banged up from it like it was nothing serious but he was pretty banged up but you would never know in a million years but the funniest thing of the whole thing is that um as soon as it happens i'm like i always tell people when i tell the story like imagine everyone in the room silent now imagine it's quieter than that <laughs> like that's the reaction of what happened when i after landed the moon. after the moonsault yeah. like it was like <laughs> the air got sucked out of the room it was the right. craziest thing i've ever kind of experienced uh, so the whole the whole story is pretty long, and I've said it uh, on a bunch of different podcasts. But the best thing was as soon as we come back to the back, Dreamer pulls me to the side while everyone's panicking, checking on George. I'm like just kind of like, is he all right? Dreamer pulls me aside and is like, "Did you pop the bag?" And I was like, Jesus. "I have no clue." And I'm not like in the mood for jokes. Dream right. Dreamer's got a like Cheshire cat smile from ear to ear. And like, I know it's because I've been on many shows with him years before. <laughs> like I've seen it. I think <laughs> he's like, "Did you pop the bag?" And I'm like, "I, I, I what, uh, what bag? I don't. What are you talking about?" He's like, "He's got a colostomy bag." And I'm like, <sighs> really "Is there? Up. Is there? Is this really all happening right now?" And like. <laughs> People are dumping ice on the back of George's neck. I'm just looking around. It's like a like a horror movie, like a war movie when the bomb goes off and you're just hearing like the pinging noise and you're looking around like, this is about me. Like I did this, so it happened and well, here I am now. And you, do you dodged the Colt Cabana bearings, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? To bring it back. You know what I mean? And now we're here doing a podcast. It only took eight years. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, but uh, so you <laughs> were here uh, and you got in. Yeah, like I left and you, you guys eventually worked your way and got got the got the spot, you and Bennett, right? Mm -hmm. Against, I, I still was making calls, but I still couldn't. <laughs> uh, the Kevin Kelly crew, right? I, I guess, I mean, we, we were like really part of the infancies of the camp. And you know what I mean? Like the Ring of Honor camp that's become, you know, their go to now. They were just getting off the ground. And like Kevin had been doing all these seminars at all these different independents, you know, throughout the country. And then they came up with the idea of like, why don't we just bring all these kids here? Um, and the camp was, you know, Bennett, Tommaso, Elgin, me, like they were, they were loaded. So those first couple of camps, they, I think they also had to justify doing them. So they, they made a lot of spots pretty clear pretty quick. And, you know, unfortunately, we never got to share a locker room at the beginning there because of uh, circumstances that, you know, un 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 uncontrolled by me. So right? stop looking at me like no, that. No, I'm just, oh, I'm looking because <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> um, yeah. But, I mean, I watch from afar. And then Bennett moves on. And mm -hmm. then you guys are also camp victims. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so... Well, Vinny, Vinny had some shots in yeah, the uh, early 2010s, right? Two th well, 2011 might have been my first camp. I was actually, me and Taven went there together uh, when we slept in the car. And we, <laughs> we, wiped the, we wiped the window away. <laughs> we're, so we're sleeping in the car. We, we did Dragon Gate the night before, and we drove to the camp, and we slept in the car. And, and going back to the locals that are just like, like, of course I would see you here, you know, <laughs> like it's just a guy that like, you know, no training, nothing. So I wake up in the morning and I wipe the dew off Taven's window. And there's this guy that we know from locally, just of all the shows previous before training. And he's just in his car. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> he's like, what's <laughs> up, fellas? Yeah, I'm like, like Taven, <laughs> look. <laughs> and he just had this camp. So 2011 was my first camp. Uh and then uh, I got told, like, go get more experience. Because at that time, I started training in 2010 with Spike. So I go get more experience, whatever. So I was like, okay. Went to go get and I went to two more. And uh, the 2012 was my first match, squash match with Rhino. It was like 30 seconds. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> it is. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so... Uh, that was my first ever TV thing with Ring of Honor. And then after that, I got random shots here and there. Like I wrestled Tommaso on uh, 
I think it was his first match back after his like first surgery in one of the house shows in Pittsburgh. I think so. I think actually, so. Yeah. yeah. One um, one of. 10,000. <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> so Tommaso, I got uh, Davey Richards. I got a couple different. We did a four corners contract match in Providence, where it was me, you, QT, QT Antonio, Antonio Thomas. Thomas. Um, and and, and Taven, you won the contract? I did not. Oh. QT Marshall yeah. did. Oh. And then uh, then I had another one in Providence. It was like me, and then Hansen. Then someone ripped up that contract. <laughs> <laughs> me, Hanson. I think Steve might have. <laughs> it was like me, Hanson, Congo, Brian Fury. So I was always getting like different opportunities. And just I wanted to be in Ring of Honor so bad at, at, at that time. And then uh, I started to kind of get frustrated with myself. You know what I mean? Not being able to like, you know, get what I wanted out of it, I guess. So... Um, and my wife, she she got to the point where she wanted to have a kid and wanted to get a house and stuff. So uh, I ended up getting, I ran like a sports sports bar and a fitness center and like a family pool club on Seekonk, Massachusetts, not too far from where I live. And um, which Bennett actually worked for me for a little bit over there. I had to actually fire him, <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty awesome. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. For wrestling uh, related? Uh, just he was sitting there and, and, and my boss was <laughs> you like. You can't tell this. Yeah, you can, right? <laughs> I don't think it's going to hurt his career at this yeah, point. Yeah, I think no. he's fine. I think he's okay. Yeah. Well, he didn't do nothing. That's why I'm telling you. Yeah, I mean, and but my I mean, boss was just a <laughs> jerk at the time. And he was just like, why is that guy just sitting there i'm like he just did his work he's like fire him and fire the other guy too and oh, yeah mike didn't Sounds care like that yeah, guy's the yeah. vince mcmahon yeah, of right, right, <laughs> sports <yeah>. fitness centers <laughs> but uh but anyway i ran those businesses for a while and um because uh, we wanted to get a house and i was living with my parents still at like 25 you know what i mean i wanted to kind of get an apartment and stuff so um i ended up kind of because I was getting frustrated, I ended up kind of just doing some of the local stuff, like a few shows here and there, but I just felt like so out of love with it for that quick minute. You know what I mean? Especially we just got married. And, uh, so once I started running that, I was making pretty decent money, like running all these companies and stuff. And it was, and we bought a house and then we had the baby. And then after I had my daughter, I was just kind of like, you know, and Bennett actually was always like, you got to go back to wrestling, man. Like, don't stop. You got to go back to wrestling. You know, you love wrestling. And I'd always talk about it with him while he was there, you know, so I'd always miss it. And then, uh, well, he wasn't doing any work. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, so then, uh, we should have a long, deep conversation. It's the right time <laughs> to do it. So, so at the, right after we had the daughter, um, the, I daughter. Was, the, the daughter. daughter. I was about to say the same thing. The daughter. The daughter. Yeah, my daughter. She's great. She's awesome. Uh, <laughs> she's funny. But uh, after I had my daughter, I was just like, you know, I, I miss wrestling. I told my wife I really miss wrestling. And then she was doing uh, makeup at the time, like, and hair. And uh, so she's like, well, if you g try to do wrestling, uh, I, I have to find a different job because we're not going to be able to support, like, you know what I mean, uh, Autumn under just you know, the wrestling. And so she went to a law firm, got a good job doing that. And I finally was like, all right, I'm going to go to this last camp and I'm going to get in the best shape that I can to get, go there. And, uh, I went to that camp and, you know, after that, they kind of pulled me aside. I was like, Oh, you know, you know, this will give you a call. Like, you know, you did a really good job at this camp. So I was like, Oh, that's cool. And some time went by. And then, uh, I had the match with lethal in West Warwick. And at this point, I, I left my other job. I gave the owner the keys, and I was just like, I'm going to just try to he do that. He fired this. you, let's be yeah. honest. No, yeah, he yeah, didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so then I had the match Hired with Bennett. Lethal. <laughs> I had the match with Lethal, and, uh, you know, at that match, Taven was doing commentary for that match. It was in West Warwick, my hometown. We I was hurt at the time. Um, Putting over your buddy. And then, uh, you know yep. What? And then... Uh, <laughs> Kevin, this is the greatest. Re How yeah. is this guy not yeah. a champion? Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> right. And then a uh, couple weeks after that is when Kevin Kelly called me, and they were like, you know, we want you to be a part of Ring of Honor, and that's when you know is that came has in that the, the group formed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like um, the idea was there to kind of keep the kingdom name going, and uh, you know, uh, there was a bunch of ideas uh, of stuff that was supposed to happen if I didn't if I hadn't got hurt, you know what I mean? Obviously saw Adam join a different group and someone else be there. But like there was, there was other 
you know, ideas for what was supposed to happen with, with uh, me and Adam after Bennett was leaving for TNA. But then, you know, the night he said that he was leaving, I blew up my knee. So it was just like, of course, all this would happen. Uh, so when we were, you know, thinking of, of things to come back, obviously there's got to be something between me and Adam. And I was like, well, why don't I just keep the name of the kingdom? And like, I can have like my own group. And, and obviously Adam's now part of the Bullet Club. And, and there's a there's a instant story there. Um, so when that idea was pitched, it was like, okay, well, who, who do you think of? And like the, the thing that I always thought was what made me and Bennett work is that we were real friends and we hung out all the time. And, you know, that was really us. And, you know, obviously me, Ben and Nicole, the same thing. We traveled together and, you know, we would always hang out and it was like, it was such a real group that I didn't want it just to be like a group of guys, you know, I never, never wanted it to be like that. So instantly, you know, I've known Vinny basically since day one. Uh, and TK, I'm sure he'll tell us his flu camp story in a second, but like he had just gone to a camp himself and like everyone was talking about him. And so we had been traveling for Northeast together while I was hurt just because, um, you know, I still wanted to be around. I obviously help out there or whatever, but like we all lived together, like I said. So it just became this, this crew before it was ever in ring of honor. We were already kind of like this, this group that was always traveling around and hanging out. And, you know, we're, we're as thick as thieves at that point. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of funny how Mike Bennett keeps coming up in this story. He really, he really is kind of the glue. Yeah, I think he's the fourth member. That's yeah, well, he's yeah. true. He, uh, yeah. It's interesting because, like, these two, like, man, have known each other for a long time. So I, when I showed up, I didn't know them at all. I, I didn't know anything about independent wrestling when I started. So um, by dumb luck, I happened to be with the same people that trained these guys. And uh, Vinny happened to be at the open house when, on my first night of training. So... Um, I met him literally day one and then you know he went away like you said and as he came back me and him started to become friends right around the time that me and him became friends I did my first ring of honor camp and I was like I was like nine months into training or something mm. at that point and uh, did okay I guess but I you were nine months into yeah training. I did okay I guess but uh there like there was this like one part where like uh, uh, J. J. Diesel, Diesel was supposed yes. to grab my foot. I was wrestling Dijak, and Diesel was his manager. And we had said that at one point I was going to hit the ropes, and Diesel would grab my foot, and that was going to be like a big cutoff spot or something, right? It's so like here it comes. I go and I hit the ropes, and Diesel doesn't grab my foot. So I just run. I whack Dijak. I'm like, hey, I'm going to run again. He's going to grab my foot this time. Go to hit it. Doesn't grab it. I go to hit it again. I go grab the fucking foot. I don't know why I did that, but I did it. <laughs> and that pretty much try it was over at that moment. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. for that, yeah, right there. I knew in that moment, I was like, well, that's that. <laughs> but uh, so then at the end of the thing, uh, Steve Carino was like, TK, I like you. Why should I hire you? And I couldn't answer the question. I honestly didn't have an answer. And you should go, well, Steve, you, you're you not, you don't own this place, so you can't technically hire <laughs> me. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> you know, they gave, they gave me the feedback, you know, add some weight, get better gear, whatever. Uh, so I go and I do. I you got to tell. Yeah. You yeah. can't pull the side. Yeah. Like that's. Yeah. Awesome. You got to tell that part of the story. Work on your chest. Okay. <laughs> so. So I tell Jay Diesel to grab the fucking foot, right? <laughs> now, Jay Diesel, you know Jay Diesel. He's no, we so love Jay. Yeah, Jay Diesel, if you listen, I love you, buddy. He's not <laughs> someone to mess with. He doesn't take threats lightly. And uh, if you tell Jay Diesel to grab the fucking foot, there's a decent chance he might. And you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so this whole thing goes down, and, and uh, Diesel does this awesome thing when he's really mad where he kind of looks down into the left, and he can't, like, look you square in the face. And he pulls me aside and, he, and he's, doing like he's that. so overwhelmed with anger he yeah, like can't, he can't even look, even look at, you. at you because he might tear your face off you know and and i don't know this because i don't really know the guy and i don't know what i've just done you know and so he's, we're at the old ring of honor dojo and he's like hey tk you think i could talk to you for a second and motions to this room that's off to the side and and so i step in the room i realize it's completely empty and he shuts the door behind us and i'm like oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like all right you've done it now like all right well You've earned this, so let's see what happens. And so, like, he just he breaks it down for right there, and he goes, "You know, I just I didn't think it was very polite or respectful the way you just told me to grab the fucking foot in front of all those people out there. Like, if you know what I'm saying, like, I should probably be tearing your head off right now. I'm not going to, but I probably should. I just want you to know that. And I'm just like, what the fuck? 
fuck is happening? <laughs> uh, so actually, and after that, me and Diesel were pretty pretty good friends. Well, that's since. weirdly kind of the same thing if you th- not think about it between me and Matt almost. Yeah, I know, right? you draw lines it's in the like sandwich, you were thinking about your you're like this. Hey, grab the fucking foot, right? And then like Jay Diesel, all he's thinking is like, Hey, man, I'm trying to get a job here. <laughs> I, I work a camp, here already, and you're asshole. yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, I'm right, on right. Yeah. TV. You're just trying yeah. to get a shot. Are you kidding me right yeah, now? Who do you think you yeah. are? Yeah. So so anyway, so that that ends, and I, I end up coming back like uh, maybe like eight months later or something like that, and whatever the next trial I could do was, and and I showed up with Vinny, and um, we did. Um, was I think it was a, a Northeast wrestling show the night before. We drove through the night to get down because we were having at the Monster Factory. At some point during the night, I just got like the flu and I, I, I got real sick. And similar to their story earlier, me and Vinny were sleeping in the car. I woke up and like I just knew I was fucked and like my my face was just pouring all kinds of mucus and I was ugly. And uh, so I you know I told Hunter when I got in there, I was like you know I I don't know how. I'm going to go with this, but I don't, I don't know how effective I'm going to be. I just want to let you know. If you see me, like, taking a knee in the middle of a drill, I'm not out of shape. And uh, I ended up going through the thing, and at one point I was dying, and Jay Diesel gave me two of something. <laughs> two somethings. <laughs> a spinach. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, hey, man, take these. You'll be right as rain. All right, fine. So I take them. Sure enough, 10 minutes later, I'm like, oh my strutter. God. I'm like, let's do this. <laughs> And so I, I managed to get through my tryout matches or whatever, and, and I do my promos, sick as a dog, puking in the trash can after everything. And and that's after that, Kevin Kelly called me and was like, would you like to work for Ring of Honor? Hey, nice. Yeah, so that yeah. was sort of my, 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 my origin story with Ring of Honor. And it's just interesting how Mike Bennett's like woven through all this. <laughs> yeah, Bennett's the man. When, when, he, when the decision was made that me and him would be in the kingdom with yeah. Matt, then uh, I was with Mike Bennett when I got the call. So it's just kind of an interesting, like, <laughs> he's like, he's woven throughout the fabric. We miss you, Mike. Oh, and so what's the deal? Just uh, try to take over Ring of Honor, yeah? Well, you know. Or the uh, world. Yeah, it's, it's Mexico slowly, included. Slowly but surely. You've lost your hair now, man. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've gone to Mexico. I've, I've conquered Mexico, obviously. I won that hair match. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Um, no, but uh, like Mexico is, is, it's crazy. It's exactly kind of what you think Mexico is going to be like, but I think like, um, I don't think people appreciate the, the kind of schedule that they keep down there. Like those guys go all year round, like, and you know, for the most part, they're doing three to four nights a week. Like almost everything's on TV and it's like, those rings are so stiff, man. uh, Like I, I came back and even that last match in the anniversary show, um, I, I was walking in there pretty hobbled just from from being there for a month and a half and that that schedule. Um, they were trying, <laughs> they they were, they were definitely getting in there. Their money's worth of me with with my schedule. I, I was either every single day was was wrestling, and the two days that I was scheduled to have off was always a press day. So kind of uh, tu habla español, yeah, poquito. Uh, so like a, like it, it was just one of those things where. Um, you know, I went down there originally as just kind of like, we're, we're starting this relationship between the companies. Here's, here's Matt Taven. He is, he is a good representative, but like at the same time, like, I guess they had like a list of guys that they wanted from ring of honor and I happened to be on it or whatever. And I was hurt though. So like it, I ring of honor didn't mind sending me down there because I was, they didn't have any plans for me. I, I wasn't going to come back until the three of us were going to debut, um, which I th- believe is October 1st, but this was like early September. And they asked me to come off, you know, injury is like, would you want to go to arena Mexico? And me being, you know, the lunatic six year old Mark that I am, I was like, I've wanted to wrestle arena Mexico my entire life. So I came back early from, from injury and man, like it, it was a crazy trial by fire just because of, of, like I said, the schedule down there and, and, the, you know, the guys down there are just so athletic and some of the stuff you, you know, you end up doing down there is like really, you know, um, a true test of, of if my knee could hold up. But I guess things worked out because I've been going back ever since. So, yeah, I, 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 I asked, I said, hey, can I get on that list? I've been denied. I love to go down to Mexico. I think that's great. Like, I think that's part of well, you going down and doing all these shows in Mexico is just the gringo or whatever. It's like, yeah. I think that's part of like wrestling. That's exact and that's exactly why I keep going down. I feel like a wrestler right. down there, you know what I mean? And like you hear all these guys with their war stories of going down to Mexico and all the crazy stuff or the schedule or 
you know, I, I obviously I was a, always grew up a big Jericho fan and like him just talking about like being in Mexico. That got like in my brain of like, you need to do these things to be a real wrestler. Yeah, you take and, an excursion. Yeah. So like, you know, me and Bennett, we, 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 you know, went to New Japan for those two years. And it's like now I've, I've gone down to Mexico for these past two years. And it's just like slowly but surely checking them all off the list. But uh Man, Mexico. Yeah, I, Colt, you, you should go down there, man. You might come back looking like this. And I'm rubbing my, oh, my like, freshly what? shaved head. Just a babe? Just, just, a, yeah, <laughs> just a Boston just, babe? Just looking <laughs> sexy like this. Um, all right, and so, uh, so the, let's promote the, uh, the school. So it's the XWA Wrestling Kingdom. It's in West Warwick. Yeah. Go ahead, Three, from- West Warwick, <laughs> Rhode Island. Three Bridal Ave. Three Bridal Ave. Uh, you know, Monday, you, you every can every Wednesday, every Monday, Wednesday, and then you know, depending on our schedule, we usually do a, a weekend uh, class as well. But uh, we're on Facebook, and you can also email uh, the official XWA at Gmail for for information, or you can hit any of us up, and you know, we'll we'll give you that info. But uh, we're right there in West Warwick every week, so come join us. Anything else to plug? Anything else I'm missing out? Pro Wrestling Tees, Thy Kingdom, <laughs> Thy Kingdom Come, uh, Matt Taven, Vinny Marseglia, yeah. TK Orion. I think we all have our our social medias, which are pretty easy to find, right? Get me at Easy. Wild Horse TKO. Yeah. On Watch my YouTube show, at huh? Horror King oh, DM. What's your YouTube show? Travel Taven. Travel Taven. I try to do, you know, we, we go to all these cool places and I try to find something macabre and obscure that's happened in these places. Like the conspiracy thing that we do at Ring of Honor, that's kind of a, a part of really my, my true interest. Like I, I, I'm always one to kind of want to dig in deeper. And, uh, you know, I, I got a couple ideas for Vegas since we're here. Tupac was, was shot not too far from here and um you know there's a couple other things that have gone down that are infamous here in vegas but i try to at least take advantage of all these different places that we go to and, and film something cool you, i did a video a youtube video on the side of the road in uh in uh iowa the other day i'll show it to you when we're done hell yeah you yeah. should have done a travel tape in our wrestling simulcast oh um, my god <sighs> i don't up. know if it could handle all that <laughs> And you can see these guys every single week on Ring of Honor Television, if it is in your area. Also glad uh, I was able to talk about that thing with Matt and I on the podcast. And I don't know, maybe there was a bit of me that was always like a little hesitant to have them on the little mini road podcasts because I knew that was a thing in our past and I didn't know if it would come up. So it was nice that it just finally came up now in this uh, big sit down with the three of them. And so now going forward, uh, when I'm on the road, these guys can be involved uh, in the show. And also maybe, you know, we could cross promote. I could be talking with them while on an excursion on Matt's YouTube show. I'm always down to do something weird in a city near me. And maybe you'll see me at an upcoming show. All you got to do is listen to these plugs and upcoming events. All right, the best way to support, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast, also slash Colt Cabana. Each week I choose one person who reviews and rates five stars on iTunes, and I'll send them a signed show ticket from the Japanese promotion DDT. I got a storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of this show, old and new. They're available ad-free on StitcherPremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt, get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe your promoter won't put me in your upcoming show or convention or even be documented on this very podcast. I got a YouTube channel. I've been throwing up a lot of stuff on there. Colt Cabana Wrestling. ColtCabana.com is my website. I got a P.O. box there. You can send me something fun. Upcoming Saturday, October 6th, Marion, Indiana, ICW. October 12th and 14th, Baltimore and Philadelphia. I'll be doing commentary for ROHWrestling.com. Thursday, October 18th, San Diego, California, at Fist Combat TV. Also, the Wednesday before, I'll be doing a seminar in San Diego. Saturday, October 20th, Des Moines, Iowa, ProWrestlingRevolver.com. Sunday, October 21st, Nashville, Tennessee, NWA70.com. Tuesday, October 23rd, Jeffersonville, Indiana. TerryHarper.com Thursday, October 25th Chicago, Illinois ZelloPro.com October 27th through the 30th I'll be on that Chris Jericho cruise Friday, November 2nd San Antonio, Texas Facebook slash RCW Forever and Thursday, November 15th Cleveland, Ohio Marty Dross and I are doing our comedy show Cleveland Comedy Festival 
ukulele.com. Intro music is by the ukulele teacher. Outro music, super fun. Yeah, yeah, rocket ship. Podcast cover art designed by Jimmy Lee. Photo by James Musselwhite. Thanks to Matt Taven, TKO Ryan, and Vinny Masalia for coming on the show this week. Thanks to some sponsors, HighSpots.com, a VOD service that's amazing, PWG, $5 Wrestling, Kevin Steen Shows. Also, AMA knee pads, which I just got a brand new pair. You should too. Gear, mask, even a wrestling ring. OneHourTees.com. They help run ProWrestlingTees.com. You can support your favorite independent wrestler by buying a t-shirt at their site. All right, we are back to the uh, regular format starting again next week. Thought I would throw this in there. Hope you enjoyed it. Just a reminder of what uh, what it used to be back in the day. Go check out. There's a lot of old ones on uh, Stitcher Premium or even you can find them on YouTube. But check back next week. I already did one show. We'll save it for next week. It was in Ottawa. I wrestled in Ottawa. I'll tell you all about it. All right, this has been The Art of Wrestling for Colt Cabana. I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Does everyone have length? Yeah, length? Yeah, I'm good here. I got plenty of length. <laughs> <laughs> I got the thickest cord, it looks like.